I have good and bad news for you. The bad news is that this is our last Greek verse a day before the fall semester. So uh, this will be our last, our last video. The good news is the reason that this is our last video is because we start the August intensive in just three days here and I will have the opportunity to see you in person. Um, so during the period of the August intensive, we're not going to have any videos. Um, and then in the period uh, of post load after the August intensive, we're also not going to have any videos. So you can sort of f focus in on your coursework and I can also focus in a little bit more on prepping our class for the fall semester. So uh, it's been a joy to uh, be with you this summer. Uh, it has been a lot of fun to translate through um, not quite three chapters of, of Revelation, and I hope you have found the process of watching these translation videos and doing some work on your own to be fruitful. And uh, you should know that it will pay dividends when it comes to the uh, Greek exegesis class in the fall, should you be taking that. All right, so as always, you're working from your reader's edition, looking to the screen for help. We're going to read twice and then jump into a translation. So we have Oida Su. Ta erga edu de doka enopion su duron eneogmenen hain udes dunatai klesai autain hati micron ekes dunamen kai iteresas mu Tan lagan, kai uk ereneso ta anima mu. Once more, a little bit faster. Oida su ta erga, edu de doka enopion su, duran eneogmenan, menen, excuse me. Hain udes dunatai klesai autain. Hati micron e kes dunamen kai eteresas. Mu tan lagan kai uk eraneso ta anima mu. So go ahead and take a look at your reader's edition of the Greek New Testament. See what you can make of this verse, and uh, I will jump back in for some help. All right, as a reminder, our context here, we have just, uh, Jesus has just addressed John, telling him to address the angel of uh, over the church in Philadelphia uh, and saying that, um, that Jesus says these things. And right here is we're getting into the content of what Jesus says, what you might see as printed in red letters uh, in your um in your uh, English Bibles. So we have right away a verb, oida, the verb uh, to know, or in this case, first person singular, so I know. And then what is known is gonna be this object right here, ta erga, a neuter accusative plural with the genitive personal pronoun coming before it, showing possession. So I know your works. And then our next main verb is going to be right here with deidoka. So this is from ditto me, a me verb. Remember, one of the peculiarities about me verbs is that in the present tense, they reduplicate their, uh, their stem consonant here, but they reduplicate with, <coughs> excuse me, they reduplicate with yoda rather than with an epsilon in the present tense. However, in the perfect tense, they still do reduplicate with an epsilon. So that's what we have going on here, our reduplication as a sign of the perfect. So uh, this is going to be a perfect active indicative, first person singular from ditto me. So uh, I give or I place. So behold, I have placed, because we have a perfect tense, past action with present results. I have placed uh, inopiansu before you. Prepositional phrase here, Enopion takes the genitive following it. I have placed before you, and then what is placed is a Thuron Eneogmene. So this is a participle right here. Uh, you get a parsing note on this one, and there's a lot of changes that have uh, gone on. Uh, so it's from Anoigo. This is the lexical form of this participle here. 
Um, and it's going to be a perfect uh, passive participle, feminine accusative singular, because it matches, it's just in a different color, it matches thurain in case gender number because it's modifying it. So a we're going to translate this. Uh, it's an attributive participle, so it's it's modifying um, it's modifying thuron. Uh, a door that has been opened. So that whole that has been opened <coughs> encapsulates what's going on with this participle. Insofar as it's a perfect participle, the action has happened in the past but continues into the present, and it's passive. Something has uh, been done. The opening has been done to the door, a door that has been opened. And then Ain follows it. This is a uh, note, or Hain, excuse me, Hain. Uh, and that Hain is important, that it's not Ain, because the Hain tells us it has a rough breathing mark. Remember, rough relative, rough relative. So this is a relative pronoun. And it is uh, recalling, its antecedent is also Thuron. Um, and so in this case, it's feminine and it's singular. In this case, it's also accusative. Remember, a relative pronoun may or may not match in, uh, in case. In this case, it does because um, it's also going to be, um, well, it's going to be uh, resumed. It's going to be resuming Thuron and further describing it. Um, and also, excuse me, what I should have said first is because it's going to be the object of... Um, it's going to be the object of this verbal phrase over here. No one is able to shut. So which no one is able to shut. So here we have with dunatai, an indicative verb, a, uh, a present middle indicative and specifically middle deponent. Uh, so middle in form, but active in meaning. And it takes a complementary infinitive following it. Remember, a complementary infinitive finishes the idea of an indicative verb. So whereas dunatai needs something to finish it, to be able to something. <coughs> and that to something comes in the form of the infinitive right here. To shut, which no one is able to shut, outtain it. So here John is being a little bit redundant. Uh, outtain is... Ultimately referring back to, how do I want to draw this? Uh, ultimately referring back to Hain, so it matches it in gender and number. It's feminine and it's singular, and also this case, uh, in case, it's also accusative. So it's going back to Hain, which is ultimately going back to Thurain. Uh, so no one is able to shut it, um, namely the door. So we have which and it. Really, John probably only needs one or the other but he gives us both anyway, the relative pronoun and the third person personal pronoun. And then uh, Jesus is going to go on to give the reason uh, why he set this open door before uh, the angel over the church uh, at Philadelphia. Because, Hati, because, uh, Ekes, you have, present active indicative, second person singular from Echo, you have. And then here John does something uh, a little bit odd. He separates this adjective and this noun it goes with <coughs> with the verb. You have little power or little uh, ability. Um, so micron is the adjective describing power or ability in dunamen. So these are both going to be uh, accusative feminine singulars, the adjective going with the noun here, matching it in case, gender, and number. And then after it, we have another uh, indicative verb, ete re sauce. Um, you might be forgiven if this looks like a participle to you, this sauce ending, but notice at the beginning we have an augment, and an augment only occurs on indicative verbs, that uh, participles do not get augments. An augment is assigned to the past time, or to a past tense, uh, either the aorist or the imperfect in the indicative mood. And this is going to be from uh, tereo. So this is an aorist, active, indicative, second person singular from tereo, which means keep. So you kept uh, ton logon mu, uh, or in John's order, mu ton logon. So this is going to be the object of what was kept. You kept my word. 
Mu here, a personal pronoun showing possession in the genitive case. You kept my word. Kai uk ereneso ta anima mu. And once again, this one is going to be an, uh, an indicative verb, and you do actually get a parsing note for this one. You would be forgiven if you thought this uh, looked like a first-person singular future indicative verb, but it's actually not. Your parsing information, uh, as in the note, is an aorist middle, specifically middle deponent indicative, second-person singular from the verb are net oh my. So I want to just show you really quickly sort of what has gone on here, how we get from our net oh my to our naso. So notice our parsing information uh, is a it's second person singular. So uh, our middle second person singular ending is actually going to be, uh, oops, not, not so like that, saw like this, sigma omicron. And what happens is that in the aorist, we get this going to an eta. That's the lengthening that happens as the sign of the augment. And then when, uh, when this sigma, um, sorry, the, then the, uh, the sigma alpha sign of the aorist is added right here after this, after this epsilon. And when that happens, this epsilon also lengthens to an eta so that you are at then erne like this and then you add on a saw and then you add on a another saw but a saw with a omicron rather than a saw with an alpha and what happens is that this sigma doesn't like to be between two vowels so it's going to drop out and when it drops out the alpha here and the omega combine together they undergo contraction and the contraction between alpha and omega results in a uh, sorry the contraction between alpha and omicron results in omega so that you end up with so and that's how you get to our nay so um, and so this is this is a result of this combination that's happened rather than being a result of the future tense which it sort of looks like so in any case, it's, we're going to translate it as you did not deny my name. Um, so and we noted that this is a middle voice verb and it's specifically middle deponent. Notice how in its lexical form it has this oh my ending. So we, uh, it's a strong clue to us that it's going to be a, a deponent verb. That is, it has middle endings that are translated actively. Uh, you did not deny. The, that is an active action. All right, let's go back and put this all together, our final uh, putting back together of Greek verse a day for the summer. So we have, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an opened door, or a door that has been opened, which no one is able to shut it, because you have little power and you kept my word and you did not deny my name. All right, I will see you in just a short few days, uh, not for, for doing Greek in the intensive, but nonetheless, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the intensive. And I'm also looking forward to our Greek adventure in the semester ahead.